Well, hello, Maverick Traders. Welcome to the 20th of June. It is Tuesday, coming out of the long holiday. Hopefully, you guys had a great long weekend. Let's jump into the markets. And as you can see, we didn't do much at all. We basically just pulled back a little bit. Now, interesting enough, folks, we did gap down. We did start a lot weaker than we ended up. So I wanted you to notice that. It's difficult to come out of the extended weekends. You've heard me say it a million times. And we did expect a pullback based on some of these charts, but we did we did uh, comfortably come off of the bottom on all three of the majors, uh, specifically the NASDAQ. So more of the same, very, very bullish. So the market slipped ever so slightly coming out of the holiday weekend, but once again, recovered the majority of any sort of pullback or loss. We do have a gap there, I'll show you here on the chart, but it's just a pullback after a very, very, very extended move to the upside across all of them. Housing starts and home builders confidence both higher. We did have a housing number that came out yesterday, even though it was over the holiday, and it showed the builders confidence had popped up a little bit, followed by some housing starts that did increase, increase as well. We will see new home sales, uh, so that will be pretty interesting later on this week, but it's actually pretty light on the economic side. Take a look at how we finished the day here, the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ lower, right? You'd think, oh, we just bled off a little bit, but the NASDAQ was significantly lower than where it ended, only down 0.16%. So well off the bottoms, uh, S&P and the Dow, both around about a half percent, and it's really not that big of a deal. Russell as well, not even a half percent. Oil slipped a little bit lower, although it is sitting above $70 a barrel. I think it's around like $70, $71 a barrel. And gold slipped as well. Take a look at the advanced decline line, 67% declining, 30% advancing. So it was definitely a pullback or a sell-off across the whole market but not in some of those excitable stocks. I'll get there in a second. Above and below the moving day average, we've got 61% above, 39% below. So we are still glass half full in that case. Let's jump into the charts themselves. And you can see this S&P had just gone parabolic over the last little bit, looking just like the NASDAQ uh, over these last few sessions. A little bit of a pullback going into the weekend, coming out of the weekend. We got just a little bit of a park here. Didn't really go anywhere. There is much room. There is a lot of room for this to correct and to fall. Hopefully it doesn't do it very aggressively and fast. That might panic some people and really mess up maybe some of the longer term bulls that we do have. It'd be nice to see this a little bit slow and steady. But the first line of support is going to be that 430 mark here. And then, yes, folks, this could go all the way back to that 420 which would, or yeah, 420, which would actually put it in between the 20 and the 50 day moving average. It's still a very healthy, comfortable pullback. I don't know if we're going to get that. I imagine somewhere around that 430 mark is where this is going to hesitate if it doesn't just consolidate uh, over the next few days. But my expectations and my outlook, yes, folks, is for some sort of consolidation or corrective action for the week. And it's a pretty interesting week as well because there's really not much going on as far as economic events, any sort of announcements or earnings, things of that nature. So that's my two cents on what I expect the markets. I've got my outlook here uh, coming up, so I'll just I'll remind you once again. <laughs> Here's the cues. It is definitely still leading the way. A little bit of a pullback as well. You could see um, the cues themselves actually finished above where they opened. Not, not the NASDAQ. Now, the NASDAQ was down 0.16, but the Qs themselves actually did park above where they opened, still down 0.28% for the day. The, the NASDAQ is very strong. and remains being uh, super strong. Let's take a look at the heat map just to let you know how this all worked out. Yeah, we had a lot more declining than advancing, but guess what? Guess what? The, we still have these little guys, right? We got NVIDIA's, Meta, Tesla. Uh, Eli Lilly, which has got all that really great optimistic drug, uh, UNH, United Healthcare, which is actually doing the same thing when it comes to Alzheimer's and um, Parkinson's drugs, things of that nature. And then you got little guys over here like PayPal. So there's some green, and these green, uh, here, here's that Salesforce, right? These greens are very large 2.61% on NVIDIA, 2.5% on CRM, uh, Tesla, look at that, 5%. So it's enough to actually push that NASDAQ back up to flat or break even. So yes, it was a very select few that did it, mostly the quote unquote darlings, some of the things that we've been seeing leading the way uh, for quite some time now. 
Where, where does that put us? It's very difficult for me to change much. In fact, I didn't move this slide at all. I'm at negative one for the weekly outlook. My expectations for from last week were a consolidation or some sort of corrective action. So I still have my weekly outlook of that negative one, but monthly, I'm definitely a plus two. We could have a very scary couple of sell-off days that show a lot of volatility and a huge drop down, and I'll probably still stay at that plus two for the monthly outlook. Uh, we are, the markets are comfortably, comfortably in bullish uh, territory. Let's take a look at some potential trades. Draft Kings and Eli Lilly, I carried forward from last week. Uh, they, they haven't done much from last week. DraftKings pulled back, Eli Lilly more consolidated, more of a diagonal thing going on. But I wanted to show you Toll Brothers because the housing industry is doing some strength. You guys can check out KBH and uh, Lennar and whatever else because I, I did see some strength in that. On the neutral side, I moved Google down over and I actually took Fang. You can see down at the bottom from sideways to down. I'll, I'll talk about that here in a second because Google's kind of got this op, uh, pessimistic uh, chart as well. Gold, first solar. And the energy sector, once again, on the weak side. Let's get started here with DraftKings. And it's got a little bit of a pullback. So I do like this overall as a bull trade. I, I believe we're talking about it right around this area. Maybe as a breakout, it's pulled back. So you guys who have been diagonalizing this, it's actually in a pretty good situation for another round. We see that it has done this before in the past. Looks like it's about to do it again. Uh, so I do like this as sideways uh, to kind of a diagonal trade. Here's Eli Lilly. This is more of a consolidation or I should say a base breakout. Um, it has really played with that four, should we call it 450, uh, 448 level, whatever this level is here. Uh, poked its head out on Friday, came back down, but look what it did. It came back up um, and closed about 0.95% to the upside. Remember, Eli Lilly was one of those darlings that made it uh, to the upside. So sideways here, I don't think it's going to really bust out anytime soon. I don't want to get too aggressive in direction. Uh, but play it sideways, a diagonal spread. Here's Toll Brothers, just taking a look at the housing market, seeing that we got a very optimistic home builder, and we also have uh, new home starts increase, all that. We'll see what ex happens to existing home sales later this week. But 2.5% feels a little extended. I believe it might be. It's just been super aggressive and exciting over this little bit. But somewhere above the 74 to 76 range, would be fine at this point, even if it did shoot up a little bit. I, I imagine it gaps up a little higher and then maybe comes back down. I It's going to be volatile, so just, just do something that can absorb it, but sideways to up works. Let's get over to the sideways, speaking of sideways, and this is Goog. I like it on the sideways just because of what it is. I do like this support area. You can see where it gapped up and changed its mind. Pretty good fall. It looks like it's trying to pin itself on that 20-day moving average, maybe about $125. However, it does have this kind of head and shoulders pattern. Let me just do some swoops in there for you. There you go. Well, that's a better one. Sorry, guys. Uh, a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern through this as well, which could be the sign of a correction. Now, even if this rolls over and falls back to 115, folks, it is still in an uptrend. So I wanted to make mention that I'm kind of a sideways attitude with this. I could see it slip lower, but if it does, it's not bearish by any means. Uh, let's go to uh, our next trade. If you guys want to take a look at FANG, I believe, I don't know if I have it up here, but you can see that it was sideways and it actually started to break its head and shoulders um, on, on its way down here. So what do I have on the bear side that I did like? GDX, look at gold, pretty good drop. We talked about this the week before. We noticed that it was slipping lower and uh, it's going to continue. Had a little bit of a bear rally and boom, right back down to where it is. Pretty big move when it comes to percentage wise. Might be into some trouble here. I don't know, but I do like uh, this sliding below that support level. So a pretty good bear for those of you who are looking for one. Here is first solar. First solar just seems to be moving lower. We talk about the island gap. We did on my Wednesday class, we could talk about it again if you guys like, uh, but I just love how this is stair-stepping down. Stair-stepping down. Look at this and draw these beautiful little lines here. And it looks like it is slipping. So I think you're probably gonna land right around this area, just above that 180 mark, which is, it's almost there. So if you wanna play this sideways to down, it can work. Even if you get caught in a little bit of these rallies that we've seen, I mean, even if we get this point and rallies up before it goes down, sideways works here. So diagonal put spread, uh, targeted butterflies are kind of cool in that situation. It just, it might, it's definitely going to hesitate once it gets down to this island area. And then last, I've got uh, the energy sector. 
Nothing new here. Just like um, gold, it gapped. So the, all the markets did start off weak. These never recovered. So the energy sector stayed lower. The gold has stayed lower. Uh, but I do like how this broke below support level pretty aggressively and it's moving average. It is close to some support levels here. But if we think that we're going to see some continuation and some weakness here, six, uh, 76 is a pretty decent target for it as well. That's all I got, folks, for uh, just some trades here. Keep an eye on them. Some of them are good. Some of them you guys might have because I do carry these over week to week. But they're still looking really good. So the markets are comfortably in the bull, bullish territory. Deep into the bullish territory, overextended or not, if we're pessimistic or not, we are so extended that it's going to take a long time. Uh, I don't want to say a long time for them to come down, but it's going to take a whole heck of a lot to get them down and keep them down. So we could see an aggressive, fast two, three days, really catastrophic, the world's ending correction, and it just be a very aggressive bull pullback. It's going to take a lot to knock these markets down. Um, it's going to take economic pressure out thing outside. So we're super bullish. Any selling this week must be treated as a bull pullback. I know my counter trend traders are out all over the place. There's weakness out there. I showed you some charts. Play some weakness. Things that aren't participating. That's great. But don't counter trend NVIDIA. You're going to get killed. <laughs> okay, so Fed speak. We got Powell testifying to the House and the Senate. Uh, one to uh, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday and then the next Thursday. I don't know which is which. So lots of blah, blah. Past that, initial jobless claims, existing home sales, and the service and manufacturing PMI. And that's it. Super light. So I don't expect much of these markets just maybe do a slow, steady pullback or maybe just stay stubborn and extend their rally up. I'm not going to see a whole lot that is going to shake anybody out of a tree here. Check your potential trades as always, folks. And uh, we will talk to you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye, everybody.